Hello. For this session, we're going to look at an additional workflow that is referred to as switches within SubAssembly Composer. Uh, so in SubAssembly Composer, you have decisions and you have switches. Uh, decision is typically used for just two conditions. So uh, an if condition, you know, if it's a cut, do this. If it's a fill, do this type of scenario. But a switch can be used for more than two conditions. It can be used to add up to 11 geometry options. Um, and it all depends on the result of an expression that you can simplify. Uh, the good example of that would be maybe different curb and gutter types. So let's say you have a type A, B, C, D, E curb and gutter without uh, having separate subassemblies. You can simply put that in uh, your subassembly in subassembly composer and switch that out easily inside Simple 3D. Uh, the example we're going to look at is a valley gutter that has multiple options within. So I'm going to first jump into Civil 3D and show you what it does and how it looks. And that'll make more sense once we look at it in SubAssembly Composer on how it all comes together. So let's jump into Civil 3D and take a look. OK, so I'm here in Civil 3D. And on my tool palette, I already have the SubAssembly added. So what I'm going to do is create an assembly real quick. So just assembly, create assembly. I'm going to call it a valley gutter. I'm going to hit OK, select my point, and then I'm going to choose my valley gutter option here. So concrete valley gutter. I'm going to select that and I'm going to add it to Civil 3D assembly. So you can see it's got one option here, but if I select this and if I look at the properties, here in the properties we have a parameter that we called type band. And under type band, you can see all the different options of valley gutter. So if I go to the top one, you can see the change. That's a very simple valley gutter. If I go to the next one, and the next one, and so forth. So you can see all the different parameters, all the different types of subassemblies you can have within the one item just by using a switch in Subassembly Composer. So now that we've seen that in Civil 3D, let's look at how it's been constructed inside Subassembly Composer. Okay, so I'm here in SubAssembly Composer. You can see here on the right how that looks like a fairly basic subassembly um, for the valley gutter. But let me turn on my flow chart. And there we go. Uh, you can see the, the level of detail within that one subassembly. Um, you initially, from your starting point, you initially define your variables. So in this case, the variables could be width, height, um, radius, so forth, so whatever feature in there. From that, you then define your switch. And if you remember in Civil 3D, we had the type band. So type band equaled you know, A1, A2, B1, B2, so forth. Um, in the switch, in the expression, if we look down here under the properties, I'm going to just bring this up a little bit so we can see it all. You can see that it's a simple expression. It basically says, if you select E1 in the type band, equal E1 from my subassembly. So we've started it, we've defined variables, we've done the switch, and then each one of these are a sequence. So you can see here the B2, D2, E2. Those are all a sequence, and all a sequence is, is those variables in different heights. So let's just take a look at a couple of these. There's the flow chart different height variables. Okay, so easily defined. Um, that may look a little complicated, but you can see here with just the use of a switch, how having multiple subassemblies within one can be a valuable tool within Civil 3D.